Okay, for the second video, we're going to talk about activity series. So, let's get this stuff out of the way. All right. So, for activity series, we're still going to be looking at redox, but we're going to focus on the single replacement redox reactions. Those kind of have some special rules, so we're going to look at those today. We're going to start out by looking at these two reactions. Right? For the first one, we have sodium reacting with iron chloride to form sodium chloride and iron. Okay, This is a single replacement redox. For the second one, we have iron reacting with sodium chloride to form iron chloride and sodium. Okay, So they're basically just the reverse of each other. Okay, Both single replacement redox. Thing is, one of these, re one of these reactions happens, the other one does not happen. Okay. This second reaction does not occur. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about why it doesn't happen. All right? And the reason is it doesn't happen because sodium is more active. Okay. Put quotes on that. Sodium's more active than iron. So let's go back up and look at the reactions. For this first one to happen, sodium had to be able to jump in here and kick iron out, basically. That's that's kind of what happened. For that to happen, basically sodium's got to be more more able to bond with chlorine. When we call that, that's what we mean by active. It's more able to bond than iron is. Okay? In the second reaction, iron tries to come in. And sodium's like, no way. So, it doesn't happen. Iron's still chilling by itself. Will not work. Okay? That's because sodium's more active than iron. And when we say more active, what I mean is, okay, more active means more easily oxidized. So if we jump jump back up here to the top, look at our two reactions. Okay, I'm going to write in the oxidation states really quick above each element. Okay, got the plus there. All right. So this first reaction, we look at it. Sodium was oxidized. Okay. Iron was reduced. Chlorine stayed the same. So basically, the reason the reaction happened is because sodium here is easier to oxidize, as it did, because it has to oxidize to become part of a compound, since it's a metal. It's more easily oxidized than iron is. Okay? For whatever reason. That's just how it is. So, sodium oxidizes, goes to a plus one. Iron goes reduced and down to a zero. In the second case, iron attempts to go from a zero to a three plus, like this, but that doesn't work. Can't do it. It's not as easily oxidized as sodium is, so the reaction's more favorable for sodium to stay bonded with chlorine. Okay. So the general rule for these single replacement reactions. Your format is A plus B C, each of those letters representing an element, will form A C plus B. Okay? And we can say that the reaction only occurs, extend a little bit here. Okay. Reaction. only occurs if A is more active than B. And this makes sense because for, for the reaction to happen, A is going to have to kick B out, put it by itself, right? And the only way it can do that is if it's easier to oxidize than B is. Okay? If it's not, reaction doesn't happen. 
And the way that we know that is, is something called the activity series, which let me look up a picture quickly. Should have one ready for you. All right, so here's your, this one's not full, hang on. There you go. Here's your activity series of metals. So the way it works, um, you've got the ones at the top, lithium, potassium, barium, calcium, those are the easiest to oxidize. So in our reaction that we're looking at, if lithium is A here, it's going to react every time. It's always going to replace other elements because it's the most active, the, mo the easiest to oxidize. Whereas down here at the bottom, gold, not very reactive at all. Okay, Gold doesn't replace any other metals in solution. Just doesn't. Okay, So you can kind of base it on each other. If one element, if one metal is higher than another, then it will replace it in a reaction, in a single replacement reaction. And you might notice hydrogen, which is not a metal, is still included on here because it is involved in a lot of reactions. And we're going to look at one of those now. All right. So let's look at um, iron reacting with hydrochloric acid. All right. So. Again, this is just going to be a single replacement. So if the reaction were to occur, what would happen is iron would replace hydrogen. Okay, you might get some FeCl2, but this is probably the most common. And you're going to get hydrogen produced. Okay, single replacement. Now, for this to happen, iron has to be higher on the activity series than is hydrogen. So let's go look at that chart we just found and make sure that is the case. Okay, so here is iron right here, and here's hydrogen. So it, it indeed is higher, thus it will replace it in this compound. So it's going to happen, basically. So the way that you can use this is if a metal is higher than hydrogen on the um, activity series, that means hydrogen, hydrochloric acid, sorry, will react with it and dissolve it, which is most metals. Most metals are higher. So something like magnesium, if you were to drop some hydrochloric acid on there, which we've done in class several times, magnesium is way higher. I think if I count, it's about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 spots higher than hydrogen on the series. So that's, that's a pretty big difference. That's going to be a fairly vigorous reaction. You're going to get magnesium chloride hydrogen. It'll happen fast. You'll see a lot of bubbling, fizzing. It'll get hot. Very exothermic. Okay. So, that's what you get. Now, if you were to take something like gold, which is at the bottom of the activity series, and react it with hydrochloric acid, not going to happen. Okay. Gold cannot replace hydrogen. It is very difficult to oxidize, especially compared to hydrogen, won't happen. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple examples before we move on. If I may go down. Okay, so what I want you to do, I'm going to give you a couple sets of reactions. I want you to predict the products and tell me whether or not the reaction will happen. So, we are going to do... Um, let's do magnesium reacted with aluminum chloride and let's do sodium reacting with chromium nitrate and let's do one more making these up as we go. Okay. Um, calcium and lithium chloride. All right, go ahead. Predict the products. Tell me whether or not it will happen. Uh, freeze the video now, and then you can look at the solutions.
All right, guys. Hang on just a second. I'm trying to spread these out a little bit so I have some room. All right. So let's go over the first one, magnesium and aluminum chloride. Should do L there. I knew something didn't look right. So if we look at our activity series, magnesium is one spot higher than aluminum. It is higher. So it's going to replace it. And we're going to get magnesium chloride and aluminum. Let's balance this quickly. OK. All right, next one, we have sodium reacting with chromium nitrate. Sodium is significantly higher, so what's going to happen? So we get sodium nitrate and chromium. Okay, we need to balance this. And guys, be careful with your subscripts down here. Okay, chromium nitrate here indicates that uh, chromium's got a two plus charge since nitrate has a negative one. In the products, sodium's only got a plus one charge, so you only need one nitrate. All right, last one, calcium and lithium fluoride. We said lithium is at the top of the activity series. If we look back, all right, all the way up here, so what that means is calcium can't replace it. So we will say no reaction. In R is the typical abbreviation for that, so no reaction. All right, so that's that's the activity series of metals. We got one more thing left in this video. All right, let me give you guys a couple more reactions. So I went ahead and paused it to save time to write the reactions. We got three reactions here. Okay, again, these are single replacement. Three different single replacement reactions, pretty similar to each other. The difference between those and what we just looked at, here we have nonmetals, okay, nonmetals replacing nonmetals, as opposed to metals replacing metals like we had before. So this is called nonmetal replacement. So in the first one we have bromine replacing iodine. Second one we have fluorine replacing chlorine. In the last one we have bromine not replacing chlorine. That one didn't happen. So what we want to talk about is, what's the difference in those three? Why did the last one not happen? So for activity series of nonmetals, the rules are pretty simple. We're only going to focus on halogens. So basically, if you are to look at a periodic table, let me pull one up quickly. Okay. If you were to look at a periodic table, remember we're talking about the halogens, the higher they are of the periodic table, the more active they are. So fluorine is going to replace any of the ones below it. Chlorine, again, any of the ones below it, but not fluorine. Bromine can replace these two. Iodine would only replace astatine. Astatine you're really not even going to see, though. It's, I think it's the rarest element in the nearest crust, so you rarely see it in reactions. Top four you see, though. So again, fluorine will replace all the other halogens. Chlorine replaces everything except for fluorine. And bromine is going to replace iodine. Okay, don't lose the iodine doing any replacing. So if we go back to our reaction, okay, bromine replaced iodine up here. Makes sense because it's more active. Fluorine was able to replace chlorine because it's higher on the table. Bromine was not able to replace chlorine because chlorine is higher. So the rules really work the same as the as the metals. The only difference is instead of having an activity series that you have to go by, you can just look at the periodic table and see which ones are higher. All right, we're going to do just a couple more practice problems and we will be done with this section. So let's look at um, chlorine reacting with. Iron chloride. Let's do iodine reacting with some salt. Okay, and let's do uh, chlorine reacting with lead 
and apply it out. Okay, three reactions. What I want you to do, um, pause the video, predict the products, tell me whether or not it will happen, unpause it and see the solutions. All right, so first one. Chlorine is trying to replace chlorine, which it can do because it's more active. So we're going to get iron chloride and chlorine gas. That should be a Z. Looks like a Z. Okay, second one. Iodine trying to replace chlorine. Cannot happen. Chlorine's more active. No reaction. Simple as that. Third one, we've got chlorine trying to replace iodine. Okay, again, nonmetal replacing nonmetal. Chlorine is higher on the periodic table, thus it will replace it. So we'll get lead, chloride, and iodide. And let me balance these quickly. Or are they all ready? This one's not. Okay, so that's it for activity series. Really, you're using the same concept, whether it's metals or nonmetals. You just have to realize which set of rules you're using. Okay, try more practice if that wasn't enough. Um, feel free to come for school after school for more help.